I would love to share this incident of a great scholar of deen, a great waliullah, Abdullah bin Mubarak rahimahullah. And it's op- opportune because he was a man of ibadah, of knowledge, and he was a man who strove in Allah's way, and he was a businessman and a philanthropist. He would every year go for Hajj. He would save his wealth, put it aside, and from his town Maru, he would leave for Hajj. And there would be different people wanting to accompany him every year. So what he would do, he would allow them and would say to them, bring your finances. And he would put it all in a box and lock it safely, marking whose finances it was. And on the journey from Maru, right till the entire Hajj, he would not cease spending on them, giving them the best of ikram and food and whatever possible, like sweet dishes. And even when they were in, in the Hajj as well, he would make ikram, feed them, assist them in fulfilling the duties of Hajj, teach them along in Makkah Mukarramah and in Medina Munawwara. And before returning as well, he would give them as though it was from the kitty telling them that you should purchase some gifts for your family members and so forth. And when they would return to Maru, he would make the ikram and gather them after a few days. And then he would take out that box, returning all the kitty to them with their names written on it. So he would make ikram of the haji because the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa as reported by Al-Imam ibn Majah in his sunan, Allah's Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Al-Hajj wafdullah Those on Hajj and on Umrah And those striving in Allah's way Are the delegates of Allah They are Allah's delegation Wafdullah They are Allah's delegation When they make dua Allah responds To their dua on behalf of everyone And when they seek Allah's forgiveness Allah accepts their forgiveness And everyone's forgiveness Through their intercession so he would make ikram of the haji. But one year, a very strange thing happened. He left from his area. This is reported by Ibn Kathir rahimahullah in his bidaya and Qadu Iyad rahimahullah. He left from his area and as he passed this one area called Kufa, he saw this young girl plucking the feathers of a dead duck. So since it's impermissible to consume dead meat, he asked her, that if, was it sacrificed? She replied, no. Then why are you plucking it? He, he asked. She replied, My family have nothing else to eat. And this has become permissible for us. So I'm going to be taking it home. And we have to eat it. And in this worry, he felt bad for her. Another report, as mentioned by Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, says that he asked her for more information. She said that my father was a man well to do. And he was killed and his wealth was usurped. He felt so bad. He asked her her address and he paid, uh, he hired someone to take him there. And when he found the house, he released his riding animal and whatever goods he had carried and wealth he had for that journey, he gave it to this family. He just kept that little amount that would suffice him to go back home. And he said that this is better for us than the Hajj this year, meaning the Nafil Hajj this year. And when he went home, sometime later, when his companions returned from Hajj, they came to congratulate him on fulfilling his Hajj too. He said, but brothers, uh, I wasn't there. One of them said, subhanallah, didn't I leave my possessions with you whilst we were at Mina on our way to Arafah? Another one also said something similar, that you bought some things from me here and there. So he's trying to explain to them that I wasn't there, but they were not accepting that from him. Later that night when he went to rest, he had a dream wherein a voice called out to him, Rejoice, O Abdullah! Allah has accepted your act of charity and Allah sent an angel in your form to carry out Hajj on your behalf. So this is what it is. With heart and soul, Allah Ta'ala knows best that we cannot go this year, but the believer's desire and his yearning desire is to go for Hajj. But respected elders and beloved brothers, we have to serve Allah Ta'ala as well and help others. That's also a very, very meritorious deed. Like Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, O Nabi of Allah, 
when you said that Hajj, which is Mabrur, an accepted Hajj, Allah rewards one with Jannah for that. One is guaranteed Jannah. How will we get this Mabrur Hajj, this accepted Hajj, which is guaranteed acceptance? In the report of Musnadi Ahmad, Allah's Nabi وسلم, said, You want an accepted Hajj? Do you want an accepted Hajj? It'amu ta'am. Kalam, wa ifsha'us salam, feed people food, make their ikram. Leenul kalam, speak to people lovingly, sweetly, politely, kindly, and spread salam to everyone. Make salam to everyone. Greet everyone first. This is how Allah will guarantee you an accepted hajj. There's another interesting incident of Abdullah bin Mubarak rahimahullah. When he was on hajj and he rested near the Kaaba, and there, as he went to sleep, he saw two angels descend from the sky and they started speaking to each other. One of the angels asked, Do you know how many people have come for Hajj this year? The other angel replied, 600,000 have come for Hajj. Hazrat Abdullah bin Mubarak rahimahullah, had also gone for Hajj that year. So the first angel asked, How many people's Hajj has been accepted? The second replied, I wonder if anyone's Hajj has been accepted at all. And in this, Abdullah bin Mubarak rahimahullah, was worried. And his worry was so many people going through so much of sacrifice, crossing so many obstacles, rivers, jungles, mountains, and hardships, and incurring expenses. And as he went, he thought a little further, the one angel said that there's a cobbler in Dimashq, in Damascus. His name is Ali ibn al-Mufiq. He couldn't come for Hajj this year. But Allah has accepted his intention of Hajj. And not only will he be rewarded for Hajj, but because of him, all the Hujjaj will be rewarded ex- as well. And this shocked Abdullah bin Mubarak, rahimahullah. And after he completed his Hajj, he decided to go to Dimashq, to Damascus, and meet this cobbler, whose Hajj intentions carried such weight. On reaching, reaching Dimashq, Abdullah bin Mubarak, rahimahullah, inquired if anyone knew a cobbler named Ali ibn al-Mufiq. The town people directed him to a house when a man appeared before the house of b- b- appeared from this house abdullah bin mubarak rahimahullah greeted him and asked him his name he replied ali ibn al mufiq hazrat abdullah rahmatullah alayhi asked him what do you do for a living brother he replied i am a cobbler then ali asked the stranger's name and and so forth so abdullah bin mubarak rahimahullah was a well known scholar when he responded and introduced himself the cobbler was anxious to find out why such a well known pious man came seeking him out. When Abdullah bin Mubarak rahimahullah asked Ali to tell him if he had any plans for Hajj and so forth, Ali rahimahullah replied that for 30 years I've lived in the hope of performing Hajj. This year I saved enough to go for Hajj, but Allah Ta'ala did not will it, so I couldn't make my intentions translate into action. Then Abdullah rahimahullah was eager to find out how could this man's Hajj be accepted and blessed for all the people who went for Hajj and when he didn't make it there in the first place. So while talking to the cobbler, he tried to actually gain more information. In that he didn't say much, but Abdullah then asked him that, why couldn't you go for Hajj this year? So this man, trying not to disclose the reason, said again that it was Allah's will. When Abdullah bin Mubarak rahimahullah insisted that please you must give me the actual reason Ali then revealed, out of respect for Hazrat Abdullah bin Mubarak rahimahullah, that once I went to see my neighbor's house, his family was just sitting down for meals. Although I was not hungry, I thought my neighbor would invite me to sit down for meals out of courtesy. But I could see that my neighbor was uh, under pressure and he was grieved about something and he wanted to avoid inviting me for dinner. So after some hesitation, the neighbor then told me, I'm sorry I cannot invite you for meals. We were without food for three days and I could not bear to see the pain and the pangs of hunger in my children. I went out looking for food today and I found a dead donkey in my desperation. I cut out some meat from the, from the dead animal and I brought it home so that my wife could cook this meal. So it's halal for us because of our extreme condition of hunger but I cannot offer it to you O my beloved neighbor. Ali Rahimahullah continued, On hearing this, my heart bled with tears. I got up and went home, collected the 3,000 dinars I saved for Hajj, 
and this took me 30 years to save but I gave my neighbor the money so this is Allah Ta'ala gave me tawfiq to do this this touched Abdullah bin Mubarak rahimahullah immensely and he then shared his dream with the qabla respected lovers of sahaba radiyallahu anhum let us serve humanity as well let us uplift people's lives let us serve allah ta'ala's deen let us make khidma for humanity let's win the duas of others let us spread the deen of allah ta'ala